Hi Year 11, here's some support to help you with going over assignment two. Um, in terms of assignment two, always start by making sure you're looking at the resources that you've been given. And I can't stress enough the importance of knowing your keywords, knowing your definitions. It's how you pass by topics. When we're looking at defining the term ecology, it's a study of interaction of living things and um, with each other in an environment. So um, yeah, it's the study of living things and their interactions in particular physical spaces. There's a whole bunch of other terms as well. So species, closely related organisms that are similar to each other, um, that are capable of interbreeding and producing fertile young. So if you can't produce fertile young, you're not in the same species. Um, community, going to be a group of the living things in a particular area, all the animals, all the plants, all together as a community. Organisms are the individual living things. Population, populations, the groups of um, particular organisms of the same species in the same area. Uh, the ecosystem will be all the abiotic and biotic factors, so the community, all the animals and plants in that, and all the non-living factors that make that up, the light intensities, the temperatures, the water of pool, all of that. And the habitat is the place that everything lives. I've mentioned the term biotic and abiotic before, but to um, clarify what they are, abiotic refers to the non-living factors in an environment, so things like light intensity, temperature, um, rainfall. Biotic refers to the living things in an environment. Two examples of biotic factors would be, well, you could name particular living things as has been done in this answer, but you could also be naming things like predation and competition, the relationship between the living things. Two examples of abiotic factors, right? These are not abiotic factors. So when you were talking about abiotic factors, we'd be talking about light intensity. We're talking about the temperature range. Okay, rocks may not be alive, but rocks are not a factor. They don't really do anything on their own. The chemical composition of the rock might be, so there we are. Define the tro trophic level, it refers to the feeding level of an organism, um, where it is in the food chain. Producer are organisms that can produce their own foods. Uh, consumers have to get their food from other living things. Um, predators going to be an organism that's going to get its food by eating other living things, by consuming them, um, by eating, yeah. So, and then we look at prey, which are the organisms that are eaten by other living things as food, the animals, but specifically, those predator and prey refer to animal species. Um, describe and explain what happens to predator populations when prey populations go up. Prey um, when prey populations go up, predator populations go up. We've got more food, as is described here. Prey populations go down, Predator populations go down. You need to explain because there is less food to sustain that population. Define the term competition um, when they are going after a limited uh, biotic or abiotic factor. Identify an abiotic factor plants compete for. Light is a valid one, um, as is space, as is water. Define the term parasite. Um, it's not an example of a symbiotic relationship. It's an example of a relationship where one organism is going to benefit and the one is going to be harmed. Symbiosis. Um, are broadly, um, yeah, symbiosis are not, um, are broadly positive relationships, so please be mindful there. Um, define the term mutualism, where both organisms benefit from the relationship. Um, give two examples explaining the advantages of mutualism. Um, so we've got one here, trees providing homes for ants and acacia trees. Um, you could also get um, examples of seed dispersal is another great one. Pollination is another good one. Um, define and give examples. So we've got some great examples. A herbivore um, would be some species of sheep or rat would be able to be herbivorous of um, plant species. Carnivores feed other animals. It's a fair example of the um, spider. But again, please note things like um, rats are very capable of feeding on um, the actual um, live young or other um, bird species um, in a New Zealand habitat. Stoat will also be a good example here. Omnivores. I keep using rats because rats eat blue and everything. And that's what omnivores effectively means. They are animals that can eat both plants and animals. Scavengers. Um, not often present in the New Zealand bush, but a scavenger is an organism that's going to produce dead and decaying biomass such as meat or rotting plants. Again, um, rats not above being a scavenger. It's what makes them such terrifying um biotic well it makes them terrifying organisms to have in a habitat parasites um organisms are going to benefit one is going to be harmed you've named an example of a flea species here i could understand that um so insect pests are um very often parasitic um 
decompose, particularly if they're very small and they're associated with um, other animals. A tick would be another example. Decomposers are going to be breaking down food and recycling organic materials. Funguses are a fair and valid example in that space, as are many insect species. Um, decomposers, sorry, describe what a food chain shows, showing you the flow of energy, as is correctly described here. Describe what a food chain shows. It shows you all the different combinations and relationships between the various organisms in terms of what they are eating. The big gap, it doesn't show you decomposers, it doesn't show you parasitism, it doesn't show you other roles, and this is critical, roles like seed dispersal, roles like pollination. An upstream effect, so it's going to be um, an effect where it's going to affect the organisms above it in the food chain. A downstream effect is going to have an um, effect on the organisms below it in the food chain. Okay, so um, if you are a predator organism, downstream effects very often affect prey organisms when there's something that happens to you. If you are a prey organism or a producer, the consumers above you are very likely to be affected. Anyway, um, listen to the feedback, play it back where you need it. If you've got specific questions, let me know, but that's assignment two.